GPT-4 has finally arrived. It leaves ChatGPT in the dust. It can convert a drawing on a napkin into a functional website. It can even explain to you a joke from a series of images. So let's find out exactly what GPT-4 actually is. OpenAI ran a developer live stream that not only introduced this multimodal AI, they also ran a demo to demonstrate how it's one of the most powerful artificial intelligence engines to this date. It's no surprise that the whole internet, Twitter especially, has gone insane hearing this news. ChatGPT was only released recently with Bing AI following. In this video, I'm going to cover what GPT-4 actually is, how it's different from previous GPT versions such as GPT-3 and GPT-3.5, and I've also gained access to test it out, so I'll demo some of its use cases too. Let's start off with GPT-4 in comparison to its previous models. It's multimodal now. This simply means that unlike previous versions of GPT, which were only text-based, GPT-4 can accept and process images as well as text. I wouldn't be surprised if there's an audio component to this as well, but for the time being, OpenAI simply did a demonstration showcasing a few examples of their image-to-text processing. The first one is on their website, where they gave AI the difficult task of explaining a joke based on a series of images. This image is of an iPhone, but it's charging with a VGA cable, and GPT-4 accurately was able to identify all the elements in the photo as well as explain the context of the joke. While this sounds pretty simple, this is something that's almost unheard of in previous versions of AI, and I guess that ReCapture will now have a run for its money trying to detect not just bots, but artificial intelligence. The second demo is where the real magic happened. OpenAI showed how you could draw a picture of a website on a napkin or maybe a piece of paper. Then you can take a photo of it and send it to GPT-4. You can ask it to produce a functional website. In this case, it was a jokes website. In just 10 to 20 seconds, GPT-4 produced all the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript code to reproduce the website, and then it was copy-pasted into an editor and showcased as a functional product. As a developer, I have to say I'm very impressed with this. This is something not very easily done. And I've seen some really cool examples already on Twitter, like Petrio, who was able to create the game Pong within 60 seconds of using GPT-4. OpenAI have also showcased some of the companies that are already working with them to be able to use GPT-4 in their product. These companies have integrated it into services. One of them is Khan Academy. They've integrated it, very similar to ChatGPT, but with more customization to work as a personal tutor for those people who are learning educational content. Maybe in the future, all our children will be taught by AI, but at least for the short term, it looks like it's definitely a great assistant to have on hand, whether you're doing any type of learning. There were lots of statistics that showcased how GPT-4 performs better than any other model to date, including it being able to pass the LSTAT and the BAR, and being in the top quarter percentile, whereas previous versions of GPT-3 were in the lower quarter of that percentile. Other than the difference of being able to also take in visual inputs, it can also produce and handle over 25,000 words of text, which is much larger than previous models. It's also much more creative, being able to edit as well as modify and iterate over technical tasks and writing tasks way more accurately than previous models as well. As an example, you could ask ChatGPT or GPT-3 GPT-3 to summarize Cinderella. And while it could do so, it wouldn't be able to do complex tasks such as being able to summarize it where every sentence of each word begins with the next letter of the alphabet, A to Z. This is a much more complex task, and yet a GPT-4 can do this quite easily. GPT-4 also surpasses ChatGPT in advanced reasoning capabilities. This means that if you're trying to book an appointment between two people's calendars with different availabilities, GPT-4 can better reason and figure out a time that works for both of them. It's also safer and less prone to making errors. OpenAI said that they spent six months making sure that GPT-4 is 82% less likely to create requests for disallowed content and 40% less likely to produce fake news or at least factually inaccurate responses. If you're interested in using it right now, you can do so on ChatGPT+, which is the paid version of ChatGPT. And if you want to get access to the API, you'll need to join the API waitlist. I went onto the ChatGPT website where I've got the new model available, GPT-4. It also showcases the difference between each model, with the differences showing in reasoning, speed, and conciseness. Version 3.5 has average reasoning, low conciseness, but quite high speed. The legacy version is less used and its speed is a bit lower, but GPT-4 has very high reasoning and high conciseness, but the speed is a little bit lower. 
I'd say it's because it's still being pushed out. So it's currently limited to 100 messages every four hours. I first asked it to showcase three different things that ChatGPT4 can do that ChatGPT3 couldn't. It technically is still trained on the same data all the way up to September 2011. And what I found surprising is that it still thinks it's a version of GPT-3, which maybe it was trained against, but it did have the correct answers, which means that it is better at comprehension and understanding, it is better at reasoning, and it's also better as a language model, supporting more languages more accurately as well. In my last video, I tricked ChatGPT into thinking 9 plus 10 is actually equal to 20 and not 19. I tried to apply this same trick to GPT-4, but it didn't work, which means that technically speaking, it gave the correct answer consistently each time I tried to trick it. The API is not quite available yet. I've applied for the waitlist and hopefully I'll be accepted soon and I'll showcase how you can use it for your own business as well as replacing ChatGPT 3.5 in the future. With GPT-4 being better almost across the board in all instances, it'll be interesting to see what happens to the old version of GPT 3.5 now that we have this available. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thank you.